Thanks so much. I'm Jay Harbaugh. Uh, honored to be here. Super thankful for the opportunity and, and uh, just thrilled to be a part of such a world-class organization. And, and uh, extra special thanks to Coach McDonald and, and, uh, and John Schneider. This is a uh, just a dream come true and, and uh, really just been ecstatic to get going here and, and uh, as this thing is building. So I would love to get to know you guys. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself when you ask the question so I can get a sense of, uh, of who's who. Yeah, Greg Bell the News Tribune. How did you hit it off with Mike McDonald? What shared interest did you have, or what was the link that carried after he left? Uh, so we, we had known each other uh, previously uh, in Baltimore. So we've known each other for quite some time, probably uh, about 10 years. And uh, we were similar age and, and uh, both, you know, guys that are, uh, you know, obviously into football but have some other interests as well. And, and uh yeah, just a great person. He, he's really easy to get along with. So a guy that uh, I kind of gravitated towards when I was uh, in Baltimore with him. Hey, Jay, Tim Booth, the Associated Press. Um, were you looking to get back to an NFL position at, at some point? Were you happy in college? Like, was, the, was this a, a career step that you were hoping to take? It really was. Uh, it was the kind of thing where, um, you know, taking this step, it really depended on it being the right opportunity, and uh, Michigan's a place that I love dearly, and, and uh, I was not looking to leave there. Uh, there's certain things that you know I wanted to be a part of, and, and uh, obviously we're able to do those things, which was very special. But um, you know, you're always seeking out that next challenge, the next opportunity, and, and uh, you hope that those things jive with what's best for your family. So uh, all those things kind of aligned, and then to be able to do it with with Mike was something that was really special as an opportunity. John Masvidal, Mario at CascadiaSports.net. Hey, what were some of those things that gravitated Mike and you? Those things that kind of you connected with? Yeah, I think um, we probably have a little bit in common personality-wise, just in the sense that you know, maybe not the uh, the prototypical, over-the-top, loudest guy you know uh, on the field. It's, it's you know, some coaches are. are you get a little bit of everything, right? And and uh, he's a guy who's just really cerebral, and I found him very interesting when he was younger because he's obviously really smart, very measured in his approach, very thoughtful when he speaks. And uh, you know, you could just tell this guy's going places. You know what I mean? And um, and you pair that with the fact that he's a good guy, day in and day out, just hyper consistent. You know, those are the types of people that you want to have as as your friends. John Boyle, Seahawks.com. Obviously, given your family history, coaching is a pretty natural line of work. Was there was that something you knew early on? Hey, I'm going to coach football, or were there other things you wanted to do, and you just sort of came, like how how did you get into this? I guess other than the obvious. Yes, uh, interesting question. I I'm really thankful to have not been you know forced. You know that sounds a little crazy, but it wasn't forced to coach, or wasn't like hey you're going to coach. And um, I was you know my parents gave me space to be able to. Uh, explore whatever I might be into and then I got to a certain point you know towards the end of high school and as kids are going certain directions the math guys are talking about doing engineering and and uh you know guys who like English are talking about journalism and stuff I was just kind of hey I like football you know and uh um seeing my dad and my grandpa and how rich their lives were just relationship wise and uh that was something that I realized, hey, I really want that. That looks like a, a, a great way to live and, and was able to get a great start with uh, Coach Riley at Oregon State and then Baltimore after that. So it's been great. But having that, just that space to be able to come to it on my own is something I'm very thankful for. Uh, Curtis Crabtree, Fox 13 here in Seattle. Uh, what's your uncle been able to uh, impart to you about being a good special teams coordinator? What do you have to do to succeed doing this job in this level? Yeah, that's a big question. There, I mean, there's, there's just so much. And, and being able to uh, observe him over the years and be around him and, and watch him work day in and day out and then watch the guys that uh, you know, he's trained and, and uh, hired in Baltimore. Uh, there's countless things. Um, and really, it's just it's, the cool thing about special teams and one of the things that I, I suppose would answer the question is that it's just football and it's all those things all in one. It's offense, it's defense, it's all, all those things you love about the game. Uh, you know, wrapped up into into um, one phase, and you know it's it's just a lot of fun, and all the things that would make you good at any other aspect of coaching, in terms of the discipline, the love, the uh, the accountability, the the teaching, the the fundamentals, like all those things carry over. So it's a uh, probably a tough question to answer, but um, I can't can't thank him enough for 
how much he's taught me over the years. Bob Condotta with the Seattle Times. Is there? I guess the rules are a little bit different, college and NFL, with some of the things, special teams wise and stuff like that. I don't know. Yep. Much, is that? Is there going to be much of a difference? I guess in what you did there that you will have to transport now that you're in the NFL. Or? Yeah, yeah. There's, so there's a lot of a uh, lot of differences rule wise, not only in just terms of the gameplay and officiating that type of thing, but also the um, just the structure of what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Obviously. Uh, the punt pun is the big one in terms of who's allowed to be, you know, downfield when the ball is punted, that sort of thing. College is kind of just a free-for-all, and uh, there's a little bit more rigidity to the NFL um, system. So that's one. Kickoff, kick return is the same way. So college has evolved a little bit and is, is probably following suit with some of the changes the NFL has made. But um, to answer your question, there will be things that will certainly have to be different, and um, I'm thankful for having, uh, you know, been in Baltimore and, and been around the NFL enough to have an idea of all those things, of what works, what doesn't work, and all that. And then uh, our assistant, Devin Fitzsimmons, who uh, just came aboard, he has uh, about 10 years in the league and, and super experienced, crazy smart, uh, awesome football coach. So really thankful to have him aboard, too, to be able to help in that transition. Jay, uh, Ian Furness, Sports Radio, KJR, and, and Fox 13 as well. How's the uh, relationship with uh, the two Husky coaches that you're working with now? Do you have to hide your smile around those guys? <laughs> those, those guys are great guys and great coaches. So, uh, yeah, I try to be uh, gracious in, in terms of the, uh, the trash talk. But, you know, it, it, it can emerge here and there. We got a couple, uh, uh, a couple good back and forth. But those guys are fantastic coaches. Um, obviously recruited against them, coached against them. And uh, just utmost respect for them. Really excited for the, uh, the chance to work alongside them now. Was, was there a... Was there an opportunity to go to LA with your dad, or was, or did you want to sort of break away and start doing your own thing a little bit? Uh, the yeah, the the uh, working with my my dad was, you know, at Michigan was probably the best best nine years of my life, and that was something that was really special to me, and an opportunity that people, you know, not everybody gets the, that that chance to do what they love, with uh, you know, with a, a mom or a dad or an uncle or whatever it might be. Um, that's really special, and I'm really thankful for that. That chance that I had, um, you know, it was it was kind of the thing where I would never I would never have wanted to to you know go my own way unless it really made sense. Um, and all the ways I kind of talked about earlier with this franchise, the direction that I know that Mike's going to take it, what uh, all the fantastic people in the front office being so proven and, and uh, excellent at what they do. So it just kind of made sense, and uh, um, you know, really thankful for the time that we were able to have together at Michigan. Jay, uh, Brady Henderson from ESPN. I'm wondering what you remember about when your dad was uh, with the 49ers and what that Seahawks 49ers rivalry was like. Yeah, yeah intense, intense. That's one of the – I was actually thinking about that the other day, that, you know, one of the differences college to pro, you get the – just the crazy intensity of the rivalries, right, being a part of the Michigan-Ohio game. That's something that's such a cool privilege. And uh, – you know, there's certain NFL matchups and uh, interdivision matchups that have that same feel, and uh, that's certainly one of them. I don't know if that answers the question, but it just feels it feels like uh, it just feels like that. Like it's it's personal. It's a uh, it's a little bit more than just a regular game. You know, kind of the way that Baltimore and, and uh, Pittsburgh is that kind of thing. So excited to uh, to be a part of that game. Did you get to any of those games back then when your dad was starting to go? Uh, one of them in in San Fran, yeah, yeah. I, w I was in I was in college during uh, during I think two of those two of his years. So uh, I was busy. Yeah, how difficult has coaching college football become? Recruiting and maintaining. You're recruiting your own guys as well as everybody else's, as well as high school. And and was that a factor at all? Want to go to the end stuff? Yeah, you, you kind of. Uh, uh, answer the question a little bit in, within the question there. Um, college is awesome. It, it's, it's different. It's changed. It doesn't make, mean it's not awesome. There's, there's additional challenges. Like you said, you, you, you end up spending just more time on some other things that don't you know, exactly have to do with the product on the field. And they do. That's why you have to – the talent acquisition is such a huge, huge thing. So there's no, there's no way to shortcut that. But, um, you know, I think – when you look at how you spend your days, yeah, you're gonna anything that has to do with the players that are coming to the building, it's that's paramount to your success. So, once you, once 
uh, you know, NIL becomes a thing and now you have to recruit your own roster more, yeah, you're gonna naturally spend a lot more time on that. So it's different, but you know, it was also different in 2010 than it was in 1990 and you know, decades before that. So I don't think, in general, I don't think change is necessarily a bad thing. And I think the direction it's going for the players is a, uh, is a, a fantastic thing. I think we can find you is how I understand the rules. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Just to clarify, can you repeat the name of the assistant coach who's coming to Seattle? Yes, Devin Fitzsimmons. He's coming from um, Carolina. He's been with Arizona, Detroit, and uh, Indy as well. And his title will be the assistant special team coach? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, Dave Mahler with KJR Radio. Your, your dad won everywhere he's gone, and he's won fast. What, what have you kind of taken from him, observed from him, that you think you can kind of bring with you here? Uh... That's another one. That's, that's tough. There's just there's so much. I mean, for him, it's it's um, the thing that you realize right away is that everything, every decision about you know scheme, about players, about uh, schedule, it's just based on one thing, which is what helps us win, what gives us the best chance of winning games. And uh, as common sense as that seems, you know, you don't. You don't necessarily always see that be the case in terms of decision making in the, in sports, and it's very practical, very simple. But I think the that the consistency uh, of which he's able to have that mindset, the discipline to stick to it, stick to the plan, um, that's huge. And the only other thing I would say is just really a, a like a relentless commitment to the fundamentals of football, of really good quarterback play and blocking and tackling. You know, the vast majority of of uh, games, no matter how complex they seem they'll come come down to those basic factors and and uh he was always able to to really put his finger on those things and where we can improve of the big the big things that are going to be uh, uh just really high leverage improvements that you can make that are going to you know help turn the team around fast and how would you say you're you're like him and how would you say you're kind of not like him Oof. uh i i don't know you'd have to ask other people that probably I don't know if I'm, I'd be a very good person to ask. It's it's tough to uh, to talk about how you're different, but I know one thing. I I would I would be um, I'd be thrilled if people would say that I was like him in in any way. I have that kind of um, respect for him and and uh, just gratitude for the amazing dad he is and what he's done for me and and uh, the incredible opportunity that I had had to learn uh, from him day in and day out it was uh, just amazing and I, something I could never pay him back for. Anything else? Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet you all.